Today's video is brought to you by BetterHelp. Hey, brother. Guys, the Harry Potter books paint Voldemort as like the big bad. And for sure he is, at least from Harry's point of view. And also basically every other person on Earth's point of view. But if you zoom out a little bit, you'll find that the main plot that's actually going on is not actually Voldemort versus Harry, but rather Voldemort versus death. Immortality. This is Voldemort's ultimate goal and really the entire reason that Harry got roped into the story to begin with. And if he had just merely set up his Horcruxes in actual secret and just let bygones be bygones, he would have succeeded in this. At least kind of. What I mean by kind of is that the Horcruxes technically always could be destroyed, but only if they were found. So that's how he's still mortal. But then the prophecy rears its big ol' ugly head and claims that the one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord will be born at the end of July to parents who have thrice-defied him. Great use of the word thrice, by the way. Right up there with like rocket ship for top words ever. Anyway though, despite Voldemort's almost certain victory, fear gets the best of him and he has to go and try to kill Harry, which of course he can't. Thus setting up the plot for the rest of the books where Harry is just constantly thwarting him. And the important thing to remember here is that despite how much Voldemort hates Harry, and trust me, he hates Harry. Killing Harry is only actually his goal at all because it helps him on his path to defeating his true enemy, death. And yet we all know that Voldemort ultimately ends up losing this battle. Death wins, Harry wins. Which kind of makes me wonder, is Harry death? Guys, in 2021, talking about mental health is finally a thing, which is why we are so excited to be sponsored by BetterHelp. Okay, so real talk, I regularly see a counselor myself because it helps. If there's one thing that I can say personally about this is that if you have any perception about a stigma associated with this at all, just ignore it. I honestly think you might be amazed at how much clearer you can see the entire world with the right help. So what is therapy exactly? Well, it's not really even a one size fits all and it can kind of just be catered to what you need. Whether that's dealing with depression or stress or anxiety, lack of motivation, it's all there. And if absolutely nothing else, sometimes it's just really nice to have a place to go and get things off of your chest, say them out loud and work the problem. BetterHelp is customizable online therapy. So whether it's phone, video, or even their live chat function, you can communicate with your therapist and not have to see them through a camera if you don't want to. And it's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can get started with your therapist in under 48 hours. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and SCB viewers can get 10% off their first month when they go to betterhelp.com super. Again, that is going to be better help.com slash super for 10% off. Link is in the description down below. All right, so Harry killed Voldemort, so what? I mean, plenty of other characters kill other characters and that doesn't make each of the killers like death himself, right? That's correct. But as always, Harry and Voldemort are a bit of a unique case. For one, I think it's safe to say that everyone is attempting to avoid death at all times, right? Or at the very least prolonging death by doing healthy things like exercising and eating healthy. Also, I don't know who needs to hear this, but go drink a glass of water. Also take a deep breath and unclench your jaw. Better, right? You are also now aware of your breathing. Moving on! Despite any measures you may take though, I think that we're all aware of the fact that death is ultimately inevitable. Voldemort, not so much the case. To him, death is just something that if you don't take the necessary precautions will happen. And you better believe he is taking those necessary precautions. Actually, I'm not sure if necessary is the right word. What he's doing is breaking the rules of magic and nature. These are the steps that he's taking specifically in his fight against death. And also, I'm just gonna say it, hydrating. Honestly, I know this is a little bit ridiculous to think about, but if his patterns of behavior are any indication, Voldemort himself is like jogging 30 to 45 minutes a day, at the very least power walking. Actually, I love to imagine him like in full robe and those like white New Balance tennis shoes, you know the ones for arch support. He's just like strolling right on past the Flamel residence being like, eat that, Nicholas. I'll show you immortality. Honestly, guys, I am loving Health Nut Voldemort. <laughs> 
has to be though, right? Like this guy hates death. Healthy habits aside though, on top of everything else, death's own hallows are thrown into the mix. Creations by death. And as always, this is where the big tell is. The Elder One. Honestly, I will agree with you guys. I cannot believe the number of different ways that we've been able to look at this one particular plot device. But today we have yet another thanks to viewer Wesley Morris, who sent in a unique idea that really got us thinking. Their idea is that death is actually a goblin. And that the real reason that the Elder Wand doesn't operate for anybody to its truest potential until Harry literally comes back to the grave is because the wand itself is operating under the goblin rules of ownership. Which in case you have forgotten, at least according to Bill Weasley, is that the true owner of any object is the creator of that object. It may be sold, but instead of ownership passing to that new person, it's considered more of a rental. A rental that is, until death, at which point that object should be returned to its creator. It's the exact argument that Griphook is making about the Sword of Gryffindor, that it may have belonged to Gryffindor, but it should have gone back to the creator after he was gone. And you can see right away how this might make sense with the Elder Wand. Death gives the wand to Antioch, who then goes and brags about how he has this super powerful wand and is killed like 12 hours later. And at that point, if death is a goblin, the wand should be returned to its creator death. But obviously it instead just goes from wizard to wizard through the centuries until it eventually ends up with Harry. But before that and along that path, it manages to kill a bunch of super powerful wizards, which sort of gives the wand itself this like Trojan horse idea. We created this thing that the wizards are going to think are really cool. And what it's actually going to do is wreak havoc amongst themselves, very specifically and notably amongst the top ranks, like the most powerful wizards, which also feels like it could be the kind of thing that the goblins may want. This really isn't a super in your face detail about the book, but if you comb through it, you'll find that just about every single year of Harry's education, he's learning specifically about goblin rebellions. Like there's no doubt about it that Voldemort's reign is intense. It's threatening, terrifying. But through the actual lens of history, it's not a particularly long stretch of time. While the tension between goblins and wizards, on the other hand, seems to stretch back really far into history, unlike this little war that Voldemort keeps wanting to have happen. It's not a thing, man. Let it go. I'm just kidding. A lot of people died. It's not funny. This idea is actually even further reinforced when we're able to listen in on the conversation between Griphook, Dean, Dirk Cresswell, and Ted Tonks. Ted asks the goblins, and where do you two fit in? I er, had the impression the goblins were for you know who on the whole. You had a false impression. We take no sides. This is a wizard's war. Personally, I read that as like, we have our own problems with you. We are not going to get involved in a fight amongst yourselves. That being said though, I'm still not sure that there's quite enough there to ensure that death was in fact a goblin. I mean, after all, even in the present, Griphook says that wizards won't share their information about wand lore. That is immaterial. Wizards refuse to share the secrets of wand lore with other magical beings. They deny us the possibility of extending our powers. It feels like if the one specific thing you're hung up on is wand lore, then it's maybe a little bit unlikely to believe that your particular race was the one to create the most powerful wand ever. That being said, I'm not sure that death itself would be the one to take sides in wars either. Like, are wars good for death? On that note, what alignment do you even think death actually is? Lawful neutral? True neutral? Neutral good? Lawful evil? Typically, it would seem like death would be the, you know, air quotes, bad guy. But is this one of those instances where like the enemy of my enemy is my friend? On the other hand, though, I very much think that it is a possibility that the wand itself operates under the goblin rules of ownership, meaning that after Antioch's death, the ownership of the wand would shift back to death for years, centuries until Harry comes along. And the ever important detail here is that we absolutely know for sure that Harry was the master of the Elder Wand specifically because he is able to use it to repair his old wand. But this is the only remarkable thing that we ever see the Elder Wand actually do. Otherwise, it's really hard to say if anybody else was truly the master of it. Voldemort even discusses this very idea with Snape. My lord, I do not understand. You have performed extraordinary magic with that wand. No, said Voldemort. 
I have performed my usual magic. I am extraordinary, but this wand, no, it has not revealed the wonders it has promised. I feel no difference between this wand and the one I procured from Ollivanders all those years ago. Dumbledore claims that he is able to tame the wand and we do get to see him use it in a battle against Voldemort, but also at the end of the day, Voldemort survives. And now that I think about it, the idea of being able to kill someone despite the fact that they have horcruxes almost feels like a unique power the wand could have possessed. At the very least, he should have been able to return him to the mist. Also, what is this whole idea most powerful wand ever? Avada Kedavra is literally already unblockable. Like, what more do you need? And on top of that, don't even get me started on Grindelwald, right? Like he has the wand, supposedly he's the master of it and still loses to Dumbledore. If anything, Voldemort literally did better than Grindelwald who had the elder wand with his own wand. So maybe the reason that everybody keeps failing with this wand is because it has one true master, its original maker, death. Which brings me back to my original point, Harry is death. I mean, we all know that Harry is the master of death, but wouldn't you also say that death is the master of death? And we've talked about this here on the channel before that maybe Dumbledore himself is death. I mean, he's the one who doles out the Deathly Hallows and when Harry ultimately does die, he greets Dumbledore as an old friend. But perhaps it is Dumbledore who is greeting death like an old friend. Because consider this, Harry also determines the fate of all three Deathly Hallows. He's the one who decides to leave the stone in the forest. He returns the Elder Wand to Dumbledore's grave and he keeps the cloak and passes it on to his own son one day. Curiously, the goblin analogy also seems to continue to play out well in this situation. When everybody is stuck at Shell Cottage, he's talking to Griphook and Griphook says, you are an unusual wizard, Harry Potter. If there was a wizard of whom I could believe that they do not seek personal gain, it would be you. Harry Potter. I know it seems like he said Harry Potter one too many times in the same sentence, but those are actually like broken up a little bit more in the real paragraph. That being said though, I actually think this is a highly underrated line from the entire Harry Potter series because exactly what Griphook is saying there is pretty much what allowed Harry to receive the stone from the Mirror of Erised back seven books ago. Only a person who wanted to find the stone, find it, but not use it, would be able to get it. You mean it's still true? After all this time? Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Always! Yeah. The point is here, despite the goblin's ironclad belief about how the possession of objects works, Harry is still the exception because he is death. I also can't ignore the decision that comes before he talks to Griphook, which is the decision to talk to Griphook before Ollivander. In this moment, Harry is trying to decide hallows or horcruxes. Who do I talk to first? Is it the wizard or the goblin? Which one is the right path? And guess what? By not choosing the Elder Wand and talking to Griphook first, he proves Griphook's point and ultimately still ends up with the Elder Wand. But what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to the Elder Wand, Harry has to make a decision between the wizard and the goblin and the goblin is the right choice. It's subtle, but I think this helps reinforce the idea that the Elder Wand considers the goblin way of thinking when determining its true master. It will only ever truly belong to its creator. And yet, Harry is the only one we ever get to see truly use it. Meaning, the boy who lived is death. Guys, for my question of the day, I know that we have tackled the Elder Wand from a million different directions, but let me know which theory do you most subscribe to in the towel section down below. But guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some more Harry Potter action from us, you can check out this video right here where we discuss whether or not Dumbledore is death. But otherwise guys, until next time, bye.